Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one. And we stand today on the edge of a new frontier. Burn away, Houston. Past the hour. Lift up on Apollo 11. Wait, what you, is it good? It's absolutely unreal. Look at the guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. Hey, there is boring soil. This is going to be some kind of different ride. It was one of humankind's greatest achievements, Apollo. From 1968 to 1972, 12 astronauts traveled 200,000 miles from the Earth to the Moon. They explored the lunar surface, collecting samples and gaining new knowledge about our solar system. Those discoveries raised exciting new questions for scientists, researchers, and educators here on Earth. Though the Apollo missions ended in the 1970s, the exploration continues with the scientific study of the roughly 400 kilograms of lunar material returned by the astronauts. NASA has made some of these lunar samples available for K-12 education. Housed in protective sample education disks, this lunar material, along with meteorite samples found on Earth, allows educators, students, and others to inspect the rocks, compare them to Earth rocks, and be a part of NASA's continuing exploration. During the Apollo program, six missions and 12 astronauts touched down on the moon and conducted a variety of scientific excursions. The astronauts, trained in geology, searched the lunar surface for rock samples that might give clues about the origin of the moon and our solar system. The moon is a history book and we're looking at the early pages of that history book and they're all there for us to see and understand. A special laboratory was set up by NASA to conduct early analysis of the lunar samples and to preserve, protect, and distribute them to the scientific community. There was a lot of excitement going on. Every scientist wanted their sample and they wanted it ASAP. Early on, scientists learned the moon is made of rocky material that has been melted, erupted as lava flows, and crushed by meteorite impacts. Decades later, the study of the samples continues as methods of analyzing the rocks improve with technology. Six Apollo lunar samples are included in the sample education disks. Since questions about the moon still continue, the material is a priceless treasure, the value of which has only begun to be mined by the scientific community. While the Apollo samples tell us stories of the moon, NASA also makes available other valuable material from our solar system, meteorites. Meteorites are rocks from space that fall to the Earth. Unchanged over time, meteorites give scientists a unique look at what was happening during the formation of our solar system billions of years ago. Although meteorites may land anywhere, meteorite researchers have found that one location on Earth has proven to be ideal for finding these fallen treasures, the Antarctic. Thousands of meteorites have been found here since the beginning of the Antarctic Search for Meteorites program in 1978. Scientists conduct expeditions in this remote area where the dark meteorite material stands out against the frozen terrain and ice movement concentrates large numbers of meteorites into small areas. The extreme cold and dry climate also helps preserve the meteorites. Treated just like a lunar sample, Antarctic meteorites are bagged and returned to the lab at the Johnson Space Center for preservation, distribution, and study. The meteorite samples and lunar samples are available in separate sample disks. Requesters can ask to borrow one or the other, or both, providing a diverse collection of space rock samples for educators, students, and the public to view firsthand. In the classroom, students learn lessons about the dynamic processes affecting Earth and solar system objects. The samples become a part of these lessons, 
students make observations of moon rocks, earth rocks, and meteorites. By comparing and contrasting the samples in earth rocks, they learn about impacts, volcanism, our early solar system, and how our own planet was formed. Nowadays, you know, you hear about uh, what are the ways can we uh, engage our students in um, the new sciences or the sciences that are going on. And uh, we want to make sure that they have more hands-on experience. They're actually able to see what we talk about instead of just showing them a picture of the disc, they're actually holding the disc in their hand. Schools aren't the only place to benefit from the sample education discs. Educators with the proper NASA certification may submit a request to display the samples at public venues, such as museums, libraries, school lobbies, churches, and even shopping malls. Display restrictions include making the discs available in a shared area where there is no charge for viewing and constant supervision by the certified borrower. A security guard may be required for events when public notice of the display is announced. So how do you check out a sample education disc? The first step is to get certified by attending a Lunar and Meteorite Certification Workshop where the borrower can learn not only the most effective methods for using the disks, but also proper security and storage. Only certified individuals may borrow a disk. Requests for the education disks are sent via email to the Johnson Space Center. Requests should be made at least six weeks in advance and include the purpose for borrowing the disk and the dates requested along with alternate dates. NASA determines the date the disks will be available and emails the borrower a loan agreement and security form to complete and return. The locations the sample will be displayed, as well as the location for storage, must be included. After the signed loan agreement and security forms are received by NASA, the disks are sent via registered, restricted mail. When the borrower receives the disks, they must sign and return the sample assignment form sent with the disk, notifying NASA the disk has arrived. From this point on, the borrower is responsible for the safety of the disk and the kit contents. The guidelines are straightforward. Protect these national treasures. When not on display or in use, the borrower must either have physical possession of the disk or the disk must be locked away in a safe or vault that meets NASA guidelines. There are other guidelines and procedures, and these are covered in detail at the certification workshop and will also be reviewed when the disks are requested. The education sample disks may be borrowed for up to two weeks. After that period, the borrower must return the disks and all the contents, along with their cases, via prepaid registered mail using the original shipping carton. These sample disks are in heavy demand because the collection contained inside is both rare and unique. Samples taken from the moon by human hands, samples from space billions of years old, and samples collected on Earth. Together, these materials tell stories, stories of how our solar system was formed, the origin of our moon, and our own planet. Through the Lunar and Meteorite Sample Education DISC program, NASA is inviting students, educators, and the public to share in those stories of rocks from space. <laughs>